day and welcome back to another Kinaway Health and Wellbeing webinar. Today's topic will be self-talk and compassion. And as always, I'm joined by Brendan, our wellbeing clinician here at Kinaway. Before we get too far into it, though, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which you may be viewing today. I'd also like to pay my respects to our past and present and extend that respect to any Indigenous people who may be watching. Um, as I mentioned right off the top, today's topic is self-talk and compassion. I'm Jason Williams, and I'll throw it over to you, Brendan. Thanks, Jason. Good morning, everyone, um, and welcome again to another webinar. Yes, yeah, self, self-talk and, and self-compassion. Uh, self-compassion is a bit of a funny one. It's been researched a lot lately uh, because you know, up until recent times, I think um, self-compassion has had a real stigma around it as, as a bit of a sign of weakness. When in actual fact, it's a, it's a real sign of strength if you can manage to um, if you can manage to find the time to delve into this a little bit more and, and be a bit nicer to ourselves. Um, so, look, the latest the, the latest research um, has shown um, that uh, you know, many people are conscious of of an inner voice that provides a, a running monologue of their lives throughout the day. This inner voice or self talk. Um, combining conscious thoughts and unconscious beliefs and biases um, provides a way for the brain to interpret and process daily experiences. Our, our self-talk can be cheerful and supportive or negative and self um positive. Um, human nature, unfortunately, is prone to negative self-talk, including you know, sweeping assertions like I can't do anything right or I'm a complete failure. So why, why self-talk matters? Um, some people believe that they can credit their success to having a strong inner voice. Now, in some cases, even a critical inner voice can push individuals to achieve um, by raising awareness of internal and external obstacles to achievement. Um, and over time, um, that self, that type of self-talk um, can take a toll on one's confidence, um, fostering shame and, and limiting, limiting your personal growth. So is it okay to talk to yourself, Brendan? Yeah, yeah. Many people use self-talk, either internal or, or allowed, uh, to motivate themselves. And research has showed that uh, it can be beneficial if done properly. Um, in a study, um, people who used the first person when talking to themselves before a task were less effective than those who spoke to themselves in the second or third person. Um, creating psychological distance in our self-talk um, then can help us calm down and, and face challenging moments. Interesting. So how can I make self-talk work for me? Okay, so you can... Um, you can make yourself talk work for you by closely monitor, monitoring it. Um, it's it's easy to allow self talk to become critical or or dwell in second guessing. Um, when this happens, research research has shown that we become less successful at finding creative solutions or problems, and, and others may come to doubt us as well. Um, correcting your self talk when it's you know, unconstructive, can keep it focused on boosting it. All right. So what are the most useful kinds of self-talk? Yeah, when self-talk focuses on how we can thrive and not just survive, it can provide essential motivation to achieving goals. Um, self-talk that helps us take a wider view of our lives and opportunities rather than narrowing, um, narrowly focusing on threats and, and self-talk uh, that that acknowledges and directly addresses our doubts and fears have been shown to promote happiness, well-being, and success. Very interesting. So how do we keep self-talk positive? Positive. Yeah, okay. So self-talk can veer towards negative when we think back to past situations in which things didn't go well. Um, and when we when we ponder a, a future full of things that can go wrong, um, Research also finds that you know when self-talk focuses on the present moment, um, in you know in, instead of 
thinking of the past or um, projecting negative uh, projecting negative outcomes. But if the self-talk focuses on the present moment and on seeing that moment and its opportunities as valuable, it's more effectively it more effectively helps us to reach our goals. Brilliant, mate. So, what's the, can you talk to me now about the danger of negative self-talk? Yeah. Um, the problem with negative self-talk is that it typically does not reflect reality. And so it can convince people wrongly that they are not only not good enough, but they can never be better. And it paralyzes them to self-absorption and an end in action. And um, people with depression and, and anxiety frequently experience destructive and dysfunctional self-talk. The internal chatter they hear may be incessant and overly critical. Um, overwhelmed by negativity, they can wallow in painful rum rumination, um, attacking themselves um, ceaselessly. Um, in severe cases, this type of inner dialogue can be curtailed with professional treatment, such as the CBT, which we talked about in our last um, webinar, the CBT being cognitive behavioural therapy. Brilliant. So why do we allow ourselves to be self-critical? Yeah, look, people who believe negative self-talk um, is valid often um, imagine that it, uh, that, that it is honest, um, that it limits their ego, that it prepares them for disappointment, or they simply deserve it. Um, considering whether they think it would be useful or fair to speak to a good friend the same, the same way can help them understand why they should stop justifying their self-criticism um, and instead work to silence it. Okay, so how can self-talk affect your sexual confidence? Yeah, look, negative self-confidence can infiltrate every aspect of a person's life, including sex. Um, when, when people are critical of their looks, your fitness or sexual skill, it can lead to performance anxiety and encounters um, uh, that, are, that are unsatisfying for both themselves and their partner. Um, cutting off self-criticism when it starts to interfere with a sexual experience and replacing it with mindful or self-compassionate thoughts um, can help restore the sexual self-confidence. Very interesting. So how does negative self-talk then affect body image? Yeah, look, the technique of reframing negative self-talk can be especially valuable when those um, thoughts focus on people's bodies or appearance. Um, when such thoughts arise, one can remind themselves, you know, everyone feels like this sometimes, but how I feel about my appearance does not determine my worth. Um, for example, or these are the legs that move me around in the world and the arms that hug the people I love. Yeah, interesting reframing there. So how do we change our self-talk? Yeah, even even half um, harsh self-talk can be effectively challenged and sidelined. Um, becoming consciously aware of its role is the first step. So then you, um, some simple and straightforward self-help techniques can be useful, such as rehearsing a more constructive inner voice with more positive tones and learning to address oneself as the third person. Um, using one's name instead of I during moments of inner dialogue. Um, researchers found you, know, you can create useful psychological distance from the emotional intensity of the self. So enabling um, one to avoid rumination uh, and move forward with greater perspective and calm and, and confidence. Yeah, really valuable, valuable stuff here. So I guess now we've moved in, can you silence your, your inner critic? You can. You can silence your inner critic. Um, and one often effective approach is self-transcendence. So when people can shift their focus away from themselves and towards others or the world at large, research shows that they are more likely to ignore or turn off their self-criticism and become more patient, um, self-compassionate and open to self-improvement or seeking help from others. So how do we change that negative inner voice? Yeah, to overcome this toxic self-criticism, pay close attention to your thoughts to detect negativity when it rises. And then either try to distract yourself or challenge the self-criticism by considering whether it's actually true, because often it isn't. Um, then replace 
um, exaggerated neg negative thoughts with more realistic statements that move you towards self-acceptance and confidence. Brilliant. So how do I then stop beating myself up? Yeah, look, to stop beating yourself up once and for all, it's important to distance yourself from your inner critic perhaps by naming it and addressing it directly. You know, research has also suggested that separating the critical voice from your own identity helps you free yourself from it. Um, you can then introduce a, a new inner voice that is an ally who consciously seeks, notices and focuses on more of the good things about yourself. I wanted to move on, Jason, to just some simple sort of um, self-compassion um, tricks or ways that you can, look, simple ways that you can just love yourself. Um, there's a quote from one of the, um, from a doctor, from a psychologist, instead of mercilessly judging and criticizing yourself for various inadequacies or shortcomings, self-compassion means you are kind and understanding when confronted with personal failings. Um, after all, whoever said you were supposed to be perfect? You know, life can be hard and we all screw up sometimes. Uh, we get frustrated and lose our temper. We regret things said or left unsaid. Our children struggle with learning disabilities or anxiety or any number of things. We hurt deep inside about harm caused to us as children. Our loved ones die, right? Um, we get laid off and can't pay the rent. Um, unfortunately, we all experience pain at various times in our lives. We all deserve comfort in these moments of pain. You can be your greatest, you can be your greatest source of comfort. There's no one better for the job since you will always have yourself and you will always know what you need. Um, and that being said, I know it's not easy to learn how to be kind to yourself. So here's some simple ways to practice self-compassion. The first one is acknowledge that you're struggling. This is the first step in any self-compassion practice. If you push away the difficult feelings or live in denial, um, you'll see no reason to treat yourself with compassion. Struggling isn't a weakness or a failure, right? It's simple being, simply just being human. Acknowledge that you're having a hard time with something or someone without judgment. Start by saying to yourself, like, this is really hard, it, but it would be hard for anyone. So the first thing is acknowledge it. Acknowledge that you're struggling. The second tip is to accept that you're imperfect and that it's normal. Now, you can stop um, trying to be perfect. Stop trying to prove your worth by doing more uh, and being who you think everyone wants you to be. When, when you make a mistake, um, experience failure or notice your own shortcomings. Give yourself some love rather than punishment. Criticisms and punishments do not motivate people to change. Um, the next step is to give yourself compliment, compliments. Um, a good friend not only lifts you up when you're down, but they congratulate you on your promotion or gives you a high five for making it to the gym five times a week. Now, give yourself the same kudos by saying, I'm proud of you for getting to work on time or yay me, you know, I, I made it through the meeting without losing my temper. Um, you do a lot of things right. So make sure you're paying attention to those moments. Um the other tip is to ask for help. A lot of people resist asking for help um, when you're having a hard time. Remember that friends and family actually like to help each other out. Um, they don't want you to suffer alone. Allow them the privilege of helping you and trust um, that they'll, you know, they'll say no if they can't. Um, another tip is to slow down, right? Many people use busyness as a form of avoidance. Um, they use it to avoid their feelings, avoid saying no, avoid disappointing people and avoid making decisions. It's easier to leave life on autopilot, um, but slowing down allows you to turn inward and listen to what your body and your heart and your mind are telling you. Um, this will help you understand what you really need right now. 
It's hard to meet your own needs when you don't know what they are. Um, a, a few more tips to go, guys. Another one is to set boundaries. Sometimes it feels like setting limits is hurtful, but boundaries are a way of loving yourself and others. Healthy boundaries demonstrate self-respect by setting clear expectations for how people can treat you and how you will treat them. Um, give yourself lots of treats, right? Treats are nice. Um, and they're nice things to do for yourself for no particular reason. Um, unlike rewards, treats don't need to be earned by good behaviour. The only rule is that self-compassionate treats need to be good for you. So I'm sorry, there's no peanut M&Ms. Um, they really aren't self-compassionate. Um, another tip is a journal. So writing, writing is one of the favourite ways, people's favourite ways to understand their feelings. You don't have to keep a, a formal journal to make this effective. You can write notes on your phone, write down your thoughts and then shred them. Make an audio recording or use an app. Um, but the point is simply to check in with yourself and find out how you're doing. Uh, it's amazing how rarely we do this without a prompt or routine to remind us. Um, and the last one is, you know, you can calm yourself like a baby. You know, think about how you might calm a crying baby or a toddler and do the adult version for yourself. Now, try a warm bath or, um, you know, get a soft fuzzy robe um, or a hot, you know, a cup of hot tea, lavender oil, you know, a massage, um, rep repetitive motion like walking or swinging. Um, there's also reading, relaxing music um, or calming self-talk such as you can say to yourself, it's going to be okay. You'll get through this. You know, you, it's going to be okay. Um, Self-compassion doesn't need to be complicated. Um, and that doesn't, but that doesn't mean it's easy, right? In fact, it, it may feel very strange at first. Remember that you deserve loving kindness just as everyone else does. You don't have to earn it and you don't have to do it perfectly. We all like to be loved in different ways. And, you know, you can use these little tips as a starting place and adapt it to meet your own needs. Um, now, what's the, what's, your fa what's the favorite way to show yourself some love? You know, sh share some ideas um, with other with, with, with yourself, have a, have a think about it, um, and, yeah, you know, see if you can um, develop some handy, um, you know, self-compassionate um, strategies for yourself. And you know, don't forget to reward yourself if something if something good happens, and um, if something and when it gets tough, guys, try and control that inner criticism. It's not real. You're going to be okay. Self compassion and self talk they're, they're quite important things that you can um, develop, and if they become a um, a good habit for you, um, you'll be in a much better place and you know a lot calmer, a lot more relaxed. So that when you know when when the shit hits the fan, um, you'll be in a lot more relaxed state to deal with it in the first place. Um, I'll finish that off. That's enough information for today. But don't forget, guys, my name is Brendan. I am your small business wellbeing clinician. I'm available on 1800 Kinaway. Um, and don't forget that my service is available to all you members of Kinaway, um, your staff, and also your uh, your family. So if you if you or if you've noticed anyone that might be experiencing some stress or some anxiety, if they're sort of acting a little bit odd and you've noticed something, um, you know, it's always handy to ask them if they're okay. But also just remind them that there's one eight hundred Kinaway. The service is free. I will chat to anyone about anything, and it is completely private and, and confidential. So don't be afraid to use the service, guys. I'm here for you uh, Monday to Friday, 9 till 5. And I think, Jason, we might end it there on the uh, self-talk and self-compassion webinar. Brilliant, mate. Thank you very much for your time here today. And I think I'll sign off by saying this. I really spoke to me, but don't forget that you can be your greatest source of comfort. I think it's really powerful. So thank you again mm. for today, Brendan. Mm. Um, mm. And good luck to everyone out there. And I'll see you again for our next webinar.